Hey everybody, it's Christina from Creations with Christina and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe so you'll be notified when I post new videos. Don't forget to give today's video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And let's hop into today's video. Today, we are going to be talking about the Cricut Mug Press. I'm super excited about this. Uh, it is uh, $199. I've recently picked it up and I can't wait to try it out. I've been working with sublimation uh, printing onto mugs using a convection toaster oven and I just love the idea of the ease of this. Now I haven't really, this is my first time trying it. The only thing I've done was taken it out of the box and updated the firmware. So we're gonna go ahead and play and um, test it out not only using the Cricut 12 ounce mugs but I'm also going to be using a 15 ounce mug and this is a sublimation mug that has a special coating on it from Amazon. So we're going to try that out and the other supplies we're going to need is just some infusible ink. Now you can do this with sublimation but I will talk about sublimation in a future video. We're going to use the infusible ink that you can use to die cut with your Cricut machine. Um, it does say that you should use a lint roller to take any lint or anything off of your product because it will burn and kind of print into your uh, mug so we want to make sure we have that and then I also pulled out because I do this with my regular mugs is alcohol uh, some alcohol ink as well as a piece of paper toweling so we're gonna go ahead and start first by getting our unit heated up so I have this um, all plugged in and the only thing we need to do is just hit the power button and once it's heated up this light right here will turn from amber to green and it'll probably make a beeping noise too and Right here we have just this little latch that lifts up and what this does is actually is what controls the little um, pad that's inside here that wraps around your mug. So when you close it, you can see that's closing uh, closing around what would be your mug. So I'm going to set this aside and we're going to hop into Design Space. I'm going to show you the project that I'm going to be doing today. All right, so I am in the Cricut Design Space program. And on the main screen, if you scroll down a little bit for right now, this probably will change as things uh, update on the home screen. But you'll see we have a whole section here that's all for just the mug presses. Now this is a small selection of mug presses. There are uh, mug press designs. There are more that you can find within the library, but we're just gonna go uh, use one of the designs that are on this main page here. So I'm gonna click View All. And just to give you kind of a quick thing, this first one, this is really cool. This is a design that um, actually gives you an option to have different edges on your uh, your infusible ink. So this one's a straight one, but you can pick things like a torn edge or scalloped edge. Then we also have a design where you can design your own. Now I went ahead, because I have two different size mugs, uh, some of these mugs do uh, are specific for just maybe a 12 ounce mug or a 15 ounce mug. So if you see one like I wanted to do this one, but this one on this screen is only showing as a 15 ounce. And since I'm using two different sizes, I thought I would go with a different design. So just something to keep in mind. So if you scroll down and I'm gonna hit the uh, this painted lines mug and you can see right here, it says this design is for a 12 ounce uh, mug blank. We are using both 12 and 15 ounce. We can get away with it with this design. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Customize. So the only reason why I click, uh, selected to customize is because I'm gonna cut this out twice. So I'm just gonna select this one and hit Control C, Control V. And that's just so I can copy a second one onto my page. Now, my first one I'm gonna keep in the blue because I am gonna use a blue colored infusible ink. And the other one is going to be pink. So I'm just gonna go up to this and up here where it says um, operations, there's a basic cut and then there's a color box. I'm just gonna go ahead and select that and I'm gonna pick just a pink, just so I can print these out on two different, um, two different portions of infusible ink. And I'm gonna select that I'm gonna cut this out on my Cricut Joy. What's really nice is that I can use my Cricut Joy to do this. I don't have to pull out my big maker for something that's um, for 12 by 12. This, these will fit onto the Cricut Joy uh, machine mat. So now all you have to do is click on make it and it's going to start with telling asking us if we want to cut without a mat on a mat. Now you only cut up without a mat if you're using smart materials. We're not using a uh, smart material so we're going to cut on a mat and we're going to click done. And it's going to start by printing our pink one first. 
So what we need to do is click mirror, even though there's no text or anything on here, we're still gonna mirror this because if you had lettering or wording or anything like that, you would need to make sure that your words are backwards so that when they print onto your cup, they're looking in the right direction. We're gonna click continue and it's just looking to connect with my joy. And then we're gonna select our materials. I am going to go ahead and click on browse all materials and we can type in infusible and we can click infusible ink transfer sheet and then click done on the bottom. And now it's gonna ask us to make sure that our fine point blade is loaded and we're going to go ahead and load our mat. So I'm gonna use one of the infusible ink transfers. We're gonna use the pink design and we're gonna add this right to our Cricut mat. My machine's telling me I'm waiting too long here. All we have to do then is click go. and then you just go ahead and click on load. So now we're ready to go ahead and cut our second one. All we have to do is click edit, make sure we select mirror and done. And we're gonna browse materials again and do infusible ink. And you'll see there's the transfer sheets and click done. And then it's gonna tell us to go ahead and load our mat into our machine. Once it's done printing, just go ahead and click unload. And we are all set now to go ahead and start putting our project together. I already went ahead and removed one of my cuts. I'm gonna remove my other one. And what you need to do is just pull your project away from your mat. So I flipped my mat upside down and I'm just rolling my mat backwards, holding onto my project. This helps prevent any additional curling. It's already gonna curl because of the way the ink is stored in the box. But now is the fun part. So let's play around with our image. Now this is pretty well cut out. So the first thing we need to do is on the edge over here, there should be a place for you to pull away. Actually, this doesn't have that. <laughs> so what we need to do is pull away the areas of the ink that we don't need. So we're just gonna pull this off. This is like my favorite part. And again, I'm using a 12 ounce and a 15 ounce mug. So this design can work with either one, um, especially with my my Amazon mugs because it uh, has a little curve on the edge. The Cricut mugs are flat, so it'll be easier to line this up at the bottom. The um, Amazon mugs have a little curve on the bottom, so it'll be easier to line, it'll be a little harder to line it up. The Cricut ones are flat. So we're just pulling off the excess. And you know, one other thing that you're probably gonna, I am gonna pull out that I didn't mention at the beginning is my heat resistant tape. That is going to be helpful for just holding everything in place, especially towards the bottoms of our cups. I'm gonna do my 12 ounce mug with the pink. So we just need to go ahead and open up our, our Cricut mugs here. And the one thing that Cricut says to do is to use a lint roller to take any um, any lint or anything that's stuck to it because that will infuse into your mug. But we're gonna start off with ours with using some rubbing alcohol. So I just have rubbing alcohol in this little pump and we just gotta turn it. And we're gonna give it a couple pumps and wipe down our mug. This will help get away any oils or anything from our hands. And then since they recommend, we're also going to just do a rollover of 
my lint roller, but I'm pretty confident my my um, alcohol ink will take care of that. So we're gonna go ahead and add our infusible ink to our mug. Now the hard part for me is actually getting the center, but what is nice is that the backing of the infusible ink is sticky, so that'll stick right to the mug. Now with Cricut's mugs, they're flat on the bottom, there's no curve or anything, so it's easy just to you know, place your uh, infusible ink transfer right down on your desktop so it hits the desktop, and then it's gonna stick much better. And for me, it's just going to be a matter of getting everything centered. So we're going to go ahead and stick this on and wrap it around. And I think I might be a little bit crooked. So we're going to make sure this is on nice and tight. And I still think it might be a little bit loose. You want to make it as tight as you possibly can. I know with doing these with the um, sublimation is the trick is to make everything as nice as possibly can. And I'm going to add some tape um, across the bottom. I don't need really any on the top because the top, the image doesn't go all the way up to the top. But because it does hit right at the very bottom, I'm going to add some of my heat transfer tape or my heat tape to the bottom. And usually what I do is I just wrap it around the edge and then curl it under. And the Cricut, actually the Cricut, I've used a couple different brands of heat tape and this tape is actually my favorite. So I recommend the Cricut brand. Um, but there's also, uh, I hear good things about a blue, another blue tape that's available on Amazon. And I haven't tried it yet because I figured I have to use up what I have first before I before I try anything new. All right, so we got that all set up. And now it's time to put this in our machine. All right, and then what you do is just go ahead and set your mug in. And we want to make sure our handle's in the center. And then we push down. And we want to make sure that all of the infusible ink is going to be inside of there. So you may have to adjust your cup a little bit. And then it beeped. And now you'll see that these lights will light up and it'll be the progress. Now, from what I understand, it takes about six minutes to complete the mug and it'll beep when it's all done. So we'll come back when it's all done and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, while my other mug is baking away there, I'm gonna go ahead and do my second mug. I'm gonna set up my second mug. So we need to do an alcohol rubbing on this one as well as the lint roller because we're gonna wanna do the same process as we do for the Cricut mugs. Now this is my one from, from Amazon, and I really like this mug. I've used it uh, for a cute Valentine's Day gift for my husband and son, and they really liked it. So, and the size is good on this. So we're just gonna make sure the cup is all nice and wiped down, nice and dry. And then we'll do the same process um, with the lint roller, just to make sure there's nothing stuck on it. And hopefully there's nothing stuck on my lint roller that's gonna transfer onto the cup. And again, this is a 15 ounce mug because that's the size I prefer, but I'm gonna do the same process. Now this is for an 11 ounce, uh, the transfer's for you know, a 12 ounce cup, but we're gonna do it on a 15 ounce and see how this looks. Now this one has a curved edge, so we might have to do a little bit of adjusting and kind of eyeballing on this one because of the fact that it's not a uh, flat edge. And we are really crooked, so we just need to kind of fix that angle there. I don't know where I went crooked. <laughs> And again, I am going to add the heat tape um, down at the bottom just to help kind of push that infusible ink into the mug for when it's pressing. So this one, again, it's not all the way down the bottom because I do have the curved edge on this one. And it's not a flat bottom cup, which is, is fine. I think this will work out just fine but we'll see how the infusible ink takes 
and how this works in the mug. So while the other one's still processing, um, the sub the infusible ink comes with a transfer sheet and because it's plastic, we don't have to worry about the dye coming through the plastic and transferring onto our uh, pad that's inside of our mug press. But if you're doing this with a piece of uh, sublimation paper or even copy paper, which uh, you can do as well, you definitely wanna put a barrier. So if you're using the infusible uh, pens, you wanna put a barrier in between because you're not gonna have this little plastic piece. You're gonna have actual, um, the ink going into the cup, but you wanna put something around so that we don't transfer ink to the inside of our mug press. I don't know if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, it'll make sense in a future video when I show you how to do the uh, infusible ink pens. So we're still waiting for our mug to be done. We have at least another minute or so. So we've got one more dot to go here on our machine. And once that's done, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so that is all done. We're just gonna go ahead and pop the handle up here. Now the handle to our mug is going to be cool, but the mug itself is going to be extremely hot. So we just need to lift it straight up and I'm gonna put it on my little heat resistant pad here and let this cool down. While that's cooling down, I'm gonna take my Amazon mug and get that in there and get that started. And it's gonna go ahead and press. So one thing to note is that the infusible ink and sublimation is all a kind of gas, um, releases a gas vapor when it's imprinting onto your, your project. So you wanna make sure you have a well-ventilated area. I have my window open here in my, my craft room and you wanna just make sure because there's gases in here and you can smell them. Uh, infusible ink to me seems a little bit stronger than sublimation ink, but I'm not 100% sure, maybe they're about the same because I do smell even with the sublimation. So make sure you have a window cracked, door open, something like that whenever you're working with sublimation and the infusible inks, just because of the gases that are released from the ink. And now for my favorite part, the reveal. I'm gonna start with my 12 ounce mug. Now they're still slightly warm and they're not bad at all. So we're just gonna go ahead and peel this off. Probably should start with the tape at the bottom first. That would make more sense. And then we're gonna go ahead and peel off our sheet to reveal our design. Ooh! So you can see a lot of the ink transferred off of the ink sheet and I love that so here's a little piece of lint and see that burned right into oh no actually that came off yay all right so oh I love it all right let's check and see how my sublimation mug from Amazon now this is much warmer because this has been out for less amount of time so we're gonna pull the tape off the bottom And then we can reveal, which is my favorite part of the whole thing, how this came out. That is still really warm. Ah, perfect. Worked out beautifully. So nice to know that I can use my sublimation mugs that I already have on hand in my machine. And I lined it up um, on the bottom so that it was kind of where that edge started to, instead of being the straight flat edge, it kind of curved in. So that putting that tape on the bottom definitely was a huge help. Oh wow, I am super excited about this. I have another piece of little something sticky on there. And wow, all right, I am super excited. So there we go, that's the, that's the end product. So we have the infusible ink. This is the taller 15 ounce mug. This is the 12 ounce. And that design actually can work for either one of those mugs. Um, this one goes a little closer to the top, and this one has a little bit of a, a gap on it. So 
there we go. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'll leave all the supplies I used in today's video down below in the YouTube description. And if you liked my video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. That's how YouTube knows you're enjoying my, my channel here. And I will catch you guys all in the next video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.